Joanna, thank you so much to come on this interview and to chat with us today about design. Hello, nice to see you everyone. And thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Let, let's open this and let me ask you, what is design? Oh, design <laughs> is uh, everything that we touch and see and um, kind of use in day-to-day -day life. Um, but design, good design is transparent. So if something is designed well, you won't notice that it is designed. So uh, useful objects, you won't notice that they are designed, they just are. Wow, that's very nice because when you say they just are, so then it's perfect. Right? They, they, it's, not it's not visibly um, uh, decorated or anything like that. So a good design is something that just works and you don't have to think about, oh, how is this made? Or it has no um, utility um, issues as it were. So that's good design to me. That's a personal opinion. <laughs> That's very interesting. So we were, have a con were having a conversation before where you are a designer, you come totally from this world and I'm not. So I'm really curious. And as you say, I really don't pay attention. It, it just is. And sometimes I like something, sometimes I don't. It invokes thoughts and feelings and emotions and, and actions, I guess. And and I'm not consciously aware of it. So now you, that you are consciously aware, of it, uh, that you are consciously aware of it, what is the important things to consider when you design your message? Um, always ask yourself, why am I doing it? Um, and who am I doing it for? So the most important thing is to never lose sight of the purpose of um, your action, whether it's design, designing a leaflet or designing a building or designing, you know, a system. Um, people design systems as well. People design um, experiences, things like that. So never forget who is it, who is it for. And sometimes the designer is just the mirror. So the designer isn't the person that decides on things. The designer just makes sure that everyone involved gets what they want, basically. So you get your client, you get the process, you get the people involved. So it's more to do with just always ask yourself, why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? Yes, that's a very good point. And we have discussed this in other videos. So knowing your why, knowing the purpose, connecting everything to your goal and knowing who the client is or, or who whom you're designing the message for is so super important. Now, when we take this to a, a level of visual design, um, how can, or what is the role of shape and form and color when I want to think about how to visually design my message, my business? Um, I mean, um, it normally has to do with what is existing already and making sure that you're consistent with what you've done previously visually so if you're starting say a brand from zero where everything has to be reinvented and the logo has to be kind of thought about and the brand architecture has to be thought about then that's a bit more complicated and you go back to resting on again the principles and the ideas and the values that you hold as a person or a company or a collective of people um, so um, shape and color almost is something that is a natural progression from meaning and from a business plan. And from, um, so that's, uh, shape and color is the translation of what exists as a, um, as a strategy before you even jump into visual design. Otherwise, um, visual design is important if you wanna disrupt what you've done previously, or if you wanna continue what was done previously. So if you have a brand or if you have an experience or an event or, a person or um, something like that, you have to say, okay, what was done before? Do we want to continue with the li that line of thought? So then you would come up with similar similarity, similar shapes, similar colors, uh, similar text. Um, but if you want to disrupt, then you're starting the process all over again, but it still has to mirror what you proposed in the, you know, the, the strategy or the, um, the kind of the pillars or something that was written before when you just sit down with your thoughts and put them down on paper. Um, 
that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So as a entrepreneur starting with a business, um, what would be the questions that you would be asking the entrepreneur to get started and have an idea about what they want? Mm, that's normally a workshop. So I would sit down with someone and um, get to know them. I think that's really important and get to know who, who they are. And most importantly for me is what motivates people. So if it's something like, oh, I'd like to be the best at this in my field, or um, that's what gets me up in the morning. Um, I think almost before anything visual starts, I kind of have to know what's behind the person and then what's behind the business. So um, that's like kind of phase one of the workshop. And then other questions would be simple things like if you, if you if your brand could speak, what would it say? And um, would it look like Harry Styles or, you know, like uh, Michael Bublé? So <laughs> we're like, um, I'm trying to introduce visual similes early on in the beginning of the process where if people don't know, don't have a clear idea of where they want to go, um, I'd even do cards with, do you prefer this to this? And the cards would be, you know, like a color palette or um, a screen. So it's more to do with the feeling at the beginning. And then as you progress, you kind of, you know, you, you do a kind of like a binary things like this or this, and then you just look at what's been chosen. And then you start to put together the ideas, but everything happens non-visually before it happens visually. But that's very interesting. And again, as a non-designer and as someone that is very much into finding purpose and understanding message and everything. So how would you translate once you know the purpose of a person, how do you translate this visually into a design? <laughs> There is a stage called mood boarding, um, which is really, really important. And people sometimes skip this. And I think it's really important for anyone to sit down and gather all the data and gather all the, the kind of the ideas and the feelings they had from the conversations and then put a mood board together. A mood board is anything from images from a magazine to something that people have taken screenshots of um, from Instagram to, um, Sometimes it's more interesting than that. Sometimes it's people giving me images and they say, I don't know why I like these, I just do. And then I put them on a mood board and then I make visual connections with other things. So if a person's giving me a building, an example of a brutalist building, for example, I'm like, okay, so they like diagonal shapes, they like straight, they like concrete, they like textures like this. So then I kind of open up the idea and put all of those ideas onto a mood board and then represent present again and say kind of like this or not like this or did I get this wrong? So there's a back and forth um, a lot there. So it's not just like magic and then you just have it. It's a lot of emailing, doing another workshop if I feel like they're not comfortable with what's been presented, things like that. Um, so yeah, mood boards, that's how it happens. And then after that, you do maybe another version of the mood board where you kind of filter down all the things that you picked up on that they enjoyed. Uh, but again, that's personal. So for me, I would not have, a, I couldn't really say that's good, that's bad. I'd just be like, I can feel that this is kind of where you wanted to go. You like a, a, a brighter color palette and maybe like a font that is quite structured. Um, and then they won't know that until I show them. It's like, is this kind of it? And then people sometimes go, oh my God, yes. Or sometimes they go, no, you, I'm not entirely sure or like change this or change that. So. Oh, that's interesting. So, so a form, we were playing just when we started this with your virtual background and I really had strong kind of feelings like, oh, this yes and this no. So let's uh, have a game. Perhaps you can say something about the background you have on right now and how this came into being. And then let's just change them to surprise the listeners and so they can come and feel what different forms and shapes and colors and color combinations do to them as a first reaction just to also get the awareness of what clients will think when they uh, see their their cho choice of colors and shapes and mm -hmm. forms. 
Interesting. So this image behind me is something that we've created for um, one of our branding projects. So um, we branded our own studio. So I'm collaborating with two other people to create a uh, kind of like a studio um, to work remotely with clients. So this is one of the icons that we've created and it's basically a grid that is at an angle and it's all um, done in um, a 2D software. So there's no 3D-ness to it, but we were trying to achieve this idea of a mirror and then the shadow that the mirror would cast. Um, and it's all to do with um, seeing things from different perspectives. So one of the, our brand pillars is a um, shifting perspective. So getting people to look at things differently um, and achieving this 3D-ness with a 2D shape. Um, and then this is the other one that we were talking about. So um, these look like tiles from maybe a bathroom, but um, for a designer, everything that has a grid on it is extremely, extremely important. So grids are something that we use all the time is to hang all the visuals and all of the text um, on a grid. So before we even start designing for anything, we're like, what does the grid look like? So this is a just a regular square grid, but there are other grids. Um, and I'll show you why grids are important because you can sit things on grids <laughs> and then you can uh, kind of play with proportion and add other things onto the grids. So everything a designer will do will have a kind of a backbone whether that's for text or for image, for anything, even for color. Um, like for example here, um, you know, it's just a taco, but the, the way that someone decided to do it at that particular angle means that the picture is more dynamic rather than doing it from above or from the side. So um, adding things on grids at, in diagonals and at angles also makes things very dynamic. So we'll just maybe stay with this one because it's a bit crazy. Yes, it's crazy. <laughs> so that, that's, and I'm saying this in a way that, you know, the message sometimes is crazy and sometimes you want to have it gentle and soft. Um, and, and so here is the spikes. It's like, <laughs> to, it, does, it does the right yeah, to yeah. me. And, and the grid is really like, do, 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 so very straightforward kind of. Uh, whereas the first one was kind of, okay, that's interesting. It makes me think. Mm -hmm. Um, and the taco makes me hungry, obviously. So if you have a restaurant, <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so that's very interesting. When I came up with my Inspire White Works logo, and it's very simple, it kind of looks like this from the other side. And, and it was to make the connection. And it's also like, it's, it's somewhat similar to the sharing sign, but with a more like, but upward and forward. And mm -hmm. so I invested a lot of thought and I'm not a designer at all. So I was like, what, what are the, what are the messages that I want to have? So that was first. And then what re would resemble this to me? And with that, I went to a designer and they were doing all kinds of things and some were resonating very much. And then I had actually a, a number of things. And then I came up with the idea of this kind of share button that, that or icon that looks differently and I gave it back to them and they would then create something from it and so so I guess another question would be how much of the taste and ideas of the designer comes in or how much is it really the clients and yeah is it something to look for a designer that has my taste originally um, or is it something that a designer really can get into my head and into my feeling? I think a good designer can do that, um, but never under underestimate um, people not understanding someone else's style. So you can be a great designer, but you wouldn't have the same sensibilities that someone that has a completely different background, comes from a different culture. Um, so designers are meant to be um, a true reflection of what um, is what the brief is. Um, but p personal style and preference, you, you cannot take that away from someone who's visual. So the whole point is that you have a conversation um, and the client will say, or the designer will say, this is my style and this is kind of what I normally do, but I also can do this style and this style and this style. And can you tell me what, which one of these projects that I've done previously or that I've worked on 
are more suited to what you think. So that's a conversation start. Um, some people just, some people have hired me purely because they like my previous projects and they require the same um, style. So then that's like a match made in heaven because I don't need to then change my own kind of perspective on how I see things. Uh, but I have had clients who've asked me to do things that I genuinely didn't like. Um, and I have started to take that on as a challenge rather than as a, oh, I have to do something that I, I'm not quite, I'm not quite sure I want to do it. Um, so now it's more like, can I challenge myself to do design that is against who I am or against what I, what I like? For example, like very, very um, photoshopped um, portraits of people. Like that's not my, my style at all. Like you can see what my style is in the back. It's just like, you know, like shapes and color. Um, but I did it and it almost, it was a bit, it gave me more pride to know that I could deliver something that wasn't about me at all. Um, but ideally I would say, choose a designer that either resonates with you personally or the work resonates with the work that um, the client does basically. Yes. Yeah, that's very interesting. So I also want to add another layer that there is the graphic design and a visual design, but there is also like consciously think about symbols that you connect with and consciously think, what is it that you want to have there? So for example, I really like flowers and I, I just noticed now, yeah, I <laughs> wasn't yeah, planned, but I that. have the flower here. I have a fl flowers, <laughs> I'm not sure. I have the flowers in the background. Okay. So perhaps I should, you know, go into what, what do flowers mean to me? And, and there is a lot of symbolism for me in growth. The, the, the law of uh, gender, which, which describes also growth and rhythm and, and how things come to flourish. And even though it's not on any of my, let's call it visuals or logo or anything, but it's something that I also work with. And, and so you're really invited to get the whole concept about how should something be designed. And I had another interview with a expert about creating rich spaces which is about how it's not about the visual design, but, and we were speaking about riches in the context of the book, The Science of Getting Rich. So he was challenging us to think what would make me feel rich. So I have here next to me like crystals and stones and I have a little manifestation thing here behind me. Mm. So that all comes into when you design, you design spaces and feelings, which connects really well to your introduction. Mm. Everything is designed. So the more you consciously think about what you really want, what you want to express, and then give it an expression with your creativity and the help of a designer. Mm. So that's how all the things come beautifully together. And in the end of the day, it's all about how it resonates. So if a client, like if, if the client doesn't resonate with the message you're sending out, it's probably not a good client. It's probably not the client you wanna um, uh, attract. So therefore the question, the real question here is, to think of what do you want to put out and those energies to attract into your business. Um, I think another really good um, advice that I've heard from someone is surround yourself with the things that you want. Um, so whether they're like symbols or not symbols or actual physical things. Um, so if something, if say for example, I have, I have a thing that I think brings me luck um, and if I take that with me on an interview, on um, a first meeting or something like that, it's kind of like a, a token of what has happened in the past. So you bring that energy with you to give you more energy for the thing that you have to do. So um, there's so many um, famous quotes of painters that I, at the top of my head, I can't remember, but basically they say, if you surround yourself with beautiful things, you will create beautiful things. So That's it's not, um, I don't think it's the, the correct quoting and I, I can't remember who said it, but it's like in that kind of spirit of um, just um, take away the things from your life that you don't like. If you don't have like having a messy desk, don't work with a messy desk, you know? If you need to 
do a little ritual before you start work. Like I always make a coffee and then I do journaling, like just, just continue to do, to do that. You know, like if that's something that, but identify what's beneficial as well. Cause that's really important because some things you think you're forming a good habit and you're not. Um, it's exactly the same with visual things like to be able to come up with visuals. I have a routine of how I normally do it and that's worked for me and I've perfected that over the years and kind of, um, but it was instinctive at the beginning. So it's really interesting to kind of lean into the instinct. So I know that I can't have a, like a messy desk before I start work. So I know that if I have a new project, I will clean my desk first. So, so visually everything is aligned. Um, so that kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, understand your own rituals and um, tell them to people, tell them like, I need five minutes so I can do this because this is what's gonna get me started on the, on, you know, in the correct way. Um, and it is amazing how much people respect that. Um, if you just tell them like, this is what I normally do and th that's just how I do it. Um, and people go, of course. And then they give you the space and they give you the time. So, yeah. So that's wonderful. And, and there is also a kind of visualizations in another video that I take you through to the to get into the energies of what you want to express. So make sure to check out also the other video. And you were saying about the quote. So there is a quote I really love from Van Gogh. And he said, first, um, first I dream, no, how, how was it? First, I dream my painting, and then I paint my dream. Mm -hmm. So with that, dear friends, go and paint your dreams. Dream first, you dream your business. So that's what you, you go, you visualize, you think about the message, you write it down. And then from this, you create your dream. So isn't that a beautiful um, ending of this interview? But dear Anna, is there one more things you want to give um, people to think of uh, when they get started with thinking about their design? Um, collect things you enjoy and share them with people. Um, I think is the most important thing. Uh, share them with your designer and there is no right or wrong answer to collecting visual things. So don't feel ashamed to be like, oh, I don't know if the designer is going to like it because they're a designer. Um, just share, just share everything, share that folder on your desktop or whatever it is where you've just like put things from Instagram or put things from Pinterest or something. Um, really important to share your ideas with the designer before they start. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for your insights. We will put your links and everything um, around this video so people can find you. Thank you so much. That was gorgeous insight. Mm -hmm wonderful way to start and I really appreciate you having here on this Thank interview. Thank you for having me. That was a pleasure to speak to you. Wonderful. Bye. Bye.